Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and let us sing, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, when the Lord opens his heart to us to be able to see what he values and value those same gracious gifts in ourselves. As we gather in prayer today, we offer Mass for Betty De Stefano on her birthday and ask the Lord's blessings on her in this new year of life. And so, brothers and sisters, for the times we have failed to love what the Lord loves and to follow where he leads us, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations for the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, 
and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. 
Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered about Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, we come back to St. Mark's Gospel. So the past five weeks we heard from St. John, well, with the exception of the assumption that was Luke, but you get the, the gist of it. And now we're back to Mark. We picked up where we left off. And I was very tempted today to say, you know what, it's been hot and sticky for a week and it's just getting worse. And so I'm going to just say, live and love and please stand for the creed. <laughs> but Jesus was not happy with that homily. And so to please the Lord, there are three things we need to know about today's gospel. Where it is, why it's important, and why rules matter. And so we'll look at each of those three things. Where this is, why that matters, and why rules are important. Because as we pick up today in Mark's Gospel, we pick up at chapter 7. So we left off as Jesus was disembarking on the boat. He got out. He looked around. The people are like sheep without a shepherd. He had pity on them. He taught them many things. And then suddenly we switched to St. John's Gospel. What we didn't hear over these past five weeks was the sixth chapter of Mark. Because guess what happens in the sixth chapter of Mark? 
Jesus gets five loaves, two fish, breaks them, multiplies them, passes them around, and then the people don't understand, and he talks to them. We heard that in John, just a longer, more detailed version of those events from the sixth chapter of Mark. After Jesus does that in the sixth chapter of Mark, he gets back in a boat, goes across the sea, and he lands in Gennesaret. And after he lands, people find out Jesus is here. He starts curing people. And as it always happens, when Jesus cures somebody, 5,000 more people want to get cured. And so everywhere he goes, people are coming out of the towns, out of the villages, out of the countryside, running, being carried as fast as they can to come and be healed by Jesus. As you might imagine, that causes somewhat of a commotion to the point where even these people from Jerusalem, the great high muckety-mucks, the Pharisees and the scribes, the important teachers, have heard that there's a whole bunch of healing going on up in Gennesaret, and they want to find out what's going on. And so they make the trip. It's not a short trip up to Gennesaret to see what in the world is going on as Jesus is healing all of those people there in Galilee. And that's where we pick up today. So that's the context. That's where we are in the gospel cycle, the gospel story. Beginning seventh chapter of St. Mark, Jesus is in Gennesaret. The Pharisees have come up to see what in the world is going on with all this healing of all these people. Second thing, why does that matter? Why in the world is that important? Why should we care on a Saturday night in Hillsborough, North Carolina, why people got together in Gennesaret in Galilee to watch Jesus cure some people. And it really all hinges on this very fascinating aside that St. Mark gives us in our gospel today. He stops in the middle of a thought, right? The Pharisees observe these disciples eating their meals with unwashed hands. Pause. And then he explains why that's important. He explains to us, who are not Jewish, and to his first hearers, his first readers, who were not Jewish, why that's a big deal. Because if you're a good observant Jew living in Galilee, all he has to say is unclean hands, and everybody says, Ugh! We, who do not come from the Holy Land, who most of us are not Jewish, we're not raised Jewish, we need to be explained why this is a huge deal. And there are two reasons, one of which the Pharisees pick up on, one of which they don't, and therein lies the problem. That's why this is important. The reason the Pharisees pick up on of why this is a big deal in Gennesaret of Galilee, and also for us, is that we've always done it that way. We've always done it that way, that when you come out of one place and go into another, you wash your hands, and then you go on about your business. As all of our mothers taught us growing up, before you sit down at a table, what do you do? You wash your hands. So that's just what we learned, what we were taught, and they're not doing that. That's the first reason this is important. And that's what the Pharisees pick up on, what they're very upset about. They're not doing what we've always done. But there's a second reason this is very, very important, and this is what they miss. The reason that a good observant first century Jew would not think about sitting down at table to eat without first washing, or to use the word that St. Mark likes to use, purifying your hands, is because you have probably touched a sinner. You have probably touched something that a sinner used or something that a sinner touched. Maybe you touched a sinner in the course of your business. And so in order to not pass on that sinfulness, you've got to wash. You've got to wash that sinfulness off of yourself. And so the Pharisees are upset because the disciples of Jesus don't see every other person on the planet as either a sinner or potential sinner. They get very upset because the Pharisees and the scribes with them see every other person not as someone that God has made, not as someone endowed with dignity, 
not as someone who has something to offer to the service of the human community and to God, but as either a wicked sinner or a potentially wicked sinner that you have to protect yourself from and wash their sinfulness away. And isn't that a category shift? To be upset because the disciples of Jesus see the dignity of other people, see the value of other people, don't see them as a potential source of uncleanness, but as a potential opportunity to share the good news that Jesus saves. Big time category shift. That's why it's important. So the third thing is why does Jesus then call the crowd back to talk to them and to explain this conversation to them? Because please note, this was a private conversation. Jesus and his disciples were having their lunch break. The Pharisees are watching them eat. And Jesus thinks this is an important enough conversation to call the crowd back. All these people who have been looking for healing, who have been looking for teaching, the people who have been following him around Genezaret, this is an important enough, big enough deal to call them back and teach. And so he explains to the crowds and by extension to us why rules are important. Because very often, we follow a rule because somebody said so. I remember growing up, my brothers, not me, of course, but my brothers would often ask, why do I have to? And my long-suffering mother would just look at it, because I said so. Any more questions? It's all the motivation and reasoning you need, because mom said so. But rules are, of course, much more important than that. Rules as Jesus explains to the crowds and to us, are first and foremost a statement of value. Rules explain what we value. Rules explain what's important. Because very often we desire things that are not good for us. We desire things that are not good for others. And so we have rules to guide and direct our choices and our freedom to those things that are good and wholesome for us and for others. And Jesus explains so beautifully, nothing that enters one from outside, i.e. the unwashed food at your table, your unwashed hands, that's not going to defile you. That's not going to reduce your dignity. But the things that come out from your heart, those are a problem. Those can be an obstacle and a stumbling block to living with the freedom that God desires for us. Those can enslave us to desires and practices that are not good for us. Those can constrict our hearts and keep us from being able to love the Lord and our neighbor with all that we are. And then he gives some really phenomenal examples to explain why rules are important as statements of value. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. Those come out from within and those defile. Okay. Now let's read these, as it were, in the mirror. If these are the wrong things, if these are the statements of what we should not value, what then does the Lord value? What does he desire for us? What does he want to place our hearts on? Where does he want to direct our love and our attention and our energy? Evil thoughts. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul and strength. Unchastity. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Theft, you shall not steal. Murder, you shall not kill. Adultery, you shall not commit it. Greed, you shall not covet. Malice, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Deceit, you shall not lie. Licentiousness, you shall honor and keep holy the Sabbath day. 
envy. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall not covet your neighbor's possessions. Blasphemy. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Arrogance. You should keep holy the Sabbath and make somebody else more important than yourself. And folly. Again, it brings us back to where we started. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus points the attention of the crowds and of us who hear his words back to the Ten Commandments. When we look at the statements of value that God has, they're expressed beautifully and succinctly in the Ten Commandments that Moses gave the people and the two great commandments of Jesus. Those tell us and show us and shape us and form us to love what God loves, to put value on the things that God values. Not just because somebody told us we had to, but because they express to us and open to us the deepest values in the heart of God. And so, brothers and sisters, as we gather on this 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, the Lord helps us to see the dignity that is carried in each person and the reason that there are rules and laws in the church and to a lesser extent in the world to protect that dignity, to drive our desires and our thoughts and our works to love and value ourselves and others. And so to live that great desire in the heart of God that we should love him with our whole heart and our whole mind and our whole soul and our whole strength, and then to love our neighbor as ourself. Brothers and sisters, we promise to love the Lord with our whole heart on the day of our baptism. So let us now renew, let us now renew the promises of that baptism to love the Lord and to reject whatever is contrary to his love. And so, brothers and sisters, I now ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Brothers and sisters, this is our faith. This is our faith that directs our minds and hearts to the things of God, and we are proud to profess it. In the same Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So trusting now in the Lord who desires our good and the good of the whole world, let us offer to him these our prayers and humble petitions. We pray for the Church of God throughout the world that we may always love what God loves and serve his people with generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who teach the faith to others as parents and godparents, teachers and catechists, professors and scholars that they may always lead by example in loving the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the leaders of nations and governments, that they may always serve the most vulnerable with generosity and never seek narrow self-interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
We pray for the sick and the suffering, the lost and the lonely, the addicted, the abandoned and depressed, those who need God's love and those for whom we promise to pray. That the Lord may raise them up by his mighty power. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our parish community at Holy Family. That the Lord may help us to love what he loves and to serve him in his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who have died. They may this day enter the kingdom of God in paradise and rejoice together with his holy saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for Betty de Stefano this day on her birthday. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, everlasting God, hear the prayers of your people gathered here and grant us all these things we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our Lord forever and ever. At this moment of the Mass, brothers and sisters, we have our offertory when we offer our gifts to the Lord in thanksgiving for what he has given to us. To those who join us in church tonight, we invite you to participate in our offertory by dropping your envelope in the baskets at the church as you leave. For those who join us by video, we welcome you also to our celebration and invite you to participate in our offertory by either sending your envelope to our parish office, or making an online or text message contribution. We thank all of you so much for your generous support of our parish as we strive to love the Lord and serve his holy people. Our offertory hymn is Seek Ye First. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Yes. 
We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Luis Raphael, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant your merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, 
may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only Lord, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although we cannot be together to receive Holy Communion today, brothers and sisters, let us unite in prayer as one community and pray together our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of things I want to update you on, so if you'd be seated for just a moment, share a couple of things with you. Uh, first, as you leave today, please use Snag a Bulletin. Uh, the annual financial report is in there from this previous fiscal year, uh, ended the 30th of June. Um, you, there's some notes in there to explain the different figures and kind of what's going on. But the general upshot of it, we didn't make as much money last year as we thought we would. Because, well, there's a plague on. Um, and the other balance side of that is we didn't do nearly as many things as we had planned on either as far as events, classes, programs, that kind of thing. And so we did not do as well as we had expected uh, in either one of those categories, but at the same time, we were able to accomplish quite a bit. Um, able to uh, complete all of our commitments to the bishop's office, all of our commitments to the poor. We're able to do quite a bit here in our church building uh, as far as upgrades and updates and all those kind of things. And so certainly many good things happened this past fiscal year, even if it wasn't what we had planned or what we had expected. And so if you'd like to see more detail about that, the whole finance report is in the bulletin today. Speaking of updates to the church, uh, we um, had a conversation with our pew supplier uh, this past week. And so we had a little parting of the ways with our pew supplier. Um, and so I want to just publicly thank uh, some fellows from our Hispanic community that when they found out that you know, we've had all these problems with the kneelers, they just stepped up, said, don't you worry, Padre, we can take care of this, not a problem. Uh, and so they're coming after work to come and fix the kneelers on the pews. And so, so deeply grateful for all those in our parish who share their talents, who share their gifts and their time to come and help us and to support our parish. And so wonderful gift that they're offering uh, to us and to help us to come to a conclusion uh, to our renovation project and to get kneelers that are safe, that are stable, that are a little more comfortable, um, all those good things. So that's the story on the kneelers and our pews. Uh, and deeply grateful again to our parishioners for helping us with those. You may have noticed that it's kind of bright in here. Um, and so this week coming up, uh, we are scheduled to receive our new windows, our new non-leaking, non-rotting windows, which would be really, really nice. With the rain we've had these past couple of weeks, uh, the non-leaking part is very, very specially nice. Um, and so with that this week, uh, all the masses, adoration, confession, everything is gonna be downstairs. Uh, the upstairs of the church will be closed this week uh, while they work on the windows um, because, well, I don't want anybody falling out of the wall. That's just not a good thing. Uh, and so everything, all the events uh, should go on as scheduled. Um, if there's a major crisis, I will let you all know through flock note, uh, but planning to do regular schedules downstairs in the hall. And again, the upstairs of the church will be closed this week uh, for that work on the windows. And finally, with school starting this week, uh, we're looking ahead to our own beginning of programs and everything else here at Holy Family. Um, so if you have a um, somebody in faith formation class for our children or our youth, those classes are starting the week of September the 12th. And that same week, the week of September the 12th, will begin all of our adult education programs as well. So we have our regular Monday afternoon uh, Bible study, to which all are welcome. Um, but it's designed, you know, in the afternoon time for folks who don't like to drive at night. That will begin the week of September 12th. Hispanic adult education will begin that week as well. Um, and then adult formation in English on Wednesday night will begin the following week. After the kids get settled in their classes, then we'll start adult education in English uh, the following week, the week after the 12th. Week of the 19th, I guess that would be calendars working the way they do. Um, and so there's a heads up that'll be in the bulletin, but just to let you all know, um, things are starting up, gearing up and beginning uh, for our new year of formation and programming and everything else here at Holy Family uh, and deeply grateful for that. Grateful we're able to do that together as a parish uh, and grateful to the Lord that he has given us so many gifts to be able to offer back to our parish community and help all of us to grow in our knowledge and love of the Lord. And so I believe that's the news. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you.
bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our recessional hymn is Lead Me, Guide Me.